Hello, welcome to our overview of GWIS Education. We want to welcome, um, thank you for coming and listening, and this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to leave or you've got other folks that you think may be interested in uh, listening to this information, um, it will be available on our website, and Beth will show you where in just shortly, but it will be available for you to re review the recording. Um, just real quick, up in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see like a little orange arrow and a little microphone. Um, that's where if you're using a telephone or whatever, you can get the information where to call in if you're using your phone. I think most people are probably just using their computer to listen. But if you have any questions during the webinar, you should see the little question box. You can type your questions in that area and we will get to you as soon as we can. There may be times also that Beth may ask you to have some input and you can also type it in that section um, and I will share it with everyone. Everyone's muted except for Beth and myself, so um, don't worry about dogs barking in the background or babies crying. We can't hear. So anyway, with that tonight, Beth Smith's going to do the training, um, and we're going to get started so that we can not keep you out too late tonight. But thank you again, Beth. Good night. Good evening, everybody. I almost said good night. See, I'm tired too. Um, Welcome to GWIS. My name is Beth Smith. I'm one of the partners with GWIS. And tonight's webinar is really going to be just what it says it is, an overview of who we are, um, how we do what we do. And for those of you who are customers, we're going to talk about things like logging in. Um, we just added a new component to the curriculum as of October, and we've added some new training guides as well. Um, so we're going to go through all of that. There's going to be a lot of information in this webinar, and that is one of the reasons we record so that you can go back and review if there's something you're like I just can't remember what they said um, we know that it's in the evening you've had a long day and so this way you can go back when you have time if you need to and go over things um, there is going to be the opportunity to request a certificate of attendance at the end um, right now the the, we call it a post assessment, but don't freak out. It's super easy. Um, and it, it, the last part of that gives you the opportunity to say, yes, I'd like a certificate. Give us your name and all that information. Um, and I'll share with you when we get to the end of the webinar where that will be so that you can do that if that's something that you would like. For those uh, of you, if there's any, yes. I would just want to um, uh, make the point that when you enter your email address in there, check it twice, because if I get the wrong email, we can't get your certificate to you. So just that's happened a couple of times. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, that's okay. <laughs> it's very important, because if you want your certificate, yes, that email needs to be correct. Um, if you're in Pennsylvania, this is not one that's in the registry for PQAS hours. Um, it's not something that they will give hours for. It's just overviews of curriculum, um, but we certainly can still do a certificate of attendance. Um, so that said, as we're going to get started here, we're going to test out that question box that Sherry just mentioned and um, give you a chance to use that and share some information. And what I would like to know, which will help me out greatly as we move through this evening, is whether or not you are currently a GWIS customer. So you can just type yes if you are and no if you are not. And then Sherry, you can just give me some kind of an idea of the mix that we have, yeses and nos. Okay. Uh, we've got like two no's. Nobody knows, believe me, you can put no one knows who answering what. It just tells me know what to focus on as we go through. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my phone in the background. <laughs> if it's all the question box is over on the right hand side so all you got to do is just type yes or no in that little box so it appears we have more no's than yeses 
Okay. All right. Well, that will really help me. It wasn't a, a necessarily a trick question. I just needed to know so that I knew what to cover. Um, so since we have some people on here, it sounds like that are not customers, I would just like to share a little bit about how GWIS came to be. Um, GWIS was founded in 2012 because we felt that there was a need out there for a curriculum and materials for family child care. Um, we know there are some excellent curriculums out there, but they're not tailored to a family child care situation. We we know you're in your home, we know you're not in a center, we know that you have a mixed age group, we know that a lot of you do not have helpers and work by yourself, and you're also running a business. So when we created GWiz, we did some text test marketing to figure out what would really help you and we sent out a sample of what we thought a curriculum might look like. We did a lot of tweaking and over the years have continued to tweak um, to come to what we have now and that being said we are always constantly updating, changing, adding, refining um, our curriculum based on actually feedback from customers. Uh, there's a lot of feedback that we take we get from customers and we're like that's a great idea let's do that and because we are an online curriculum everything that you need is right here on this website and I'm going to show you how you download all those materials from our website then it's easy for us to do that it's easy for us to add new components we're not having to go to press and ship things to you um, so this is our website and we have tabs across the top and under each one of these tabs there are a lot of different materials tonight we're going to focus on a couple of our new training guides um, and our expanded user guide but I'm also going to show you how to log in, how to get to the curriculum materials, and then at the very end, for those of you who are not customers or maybe you were an old customer and you're thinking about coming back, I'm going to have a special discount code to share with you. Um, so one of the new things we've just added is under our support tab, there's a new tab called training guides. Um, for those of you who are customers, you know about our user's guide, which is our training manual about the curriculum, but now we have some additional guides um, and we put them all in one place to make them easy to find. I'm going to start with our user's guide. This is a very extensive booklet that has gotten even more extensive in the past uh, two weeks. We've added some new sections so if you are a current user and you have seen this before this is the new version that was just posted last week so I encourage you if nothing else to just take a look at the new sections that we added um, you might even want to print those out if you've printed this out that is also speaking of printing the beauty of GWiz you can decide for instance with this user's guide if you want to print it out and put it in a binder or if you just want to save it as a file to your computer on my PC um, I have a laptop. This is where I would go to print and this is where I would go to download. If you're on a Mac it's going to look a little bit differently but nonetheless this is a PDF file so you should be able to save it to your computer and even if you choose to print it we encourage you to save it um, and back it up. Now that's not as important as it is with the program files because this is the user's guide and this is always available even if you're not a customer you can access this content. Um, when we get into the actual curriculum, we'll talk about why it's important to download and save and also back up. With that said, I'm going to scroll to the table of contents, which like I said, has been expanded. Um, we've added some new, a new, entirely new section in here called Meeting the Needs of All Children in GWiz, where we cover cultural responsiveness, linguistic responsiveness, children with disabilities, and suspected delays. We've also added some additional information in our individualization and authentic assessment, and we added a section about how we tie in with more formal assessments, um, for instance, ages and stages, or GOLD, or DRDP, and I'm going to talk about that in a section, in a second, excuse me. Um, we've also expanded our research base. Um, there's been some new research coming out, and so our research base has been expanded expanded and also reorganized that whole section. So for those of you who are customers, again, I highly encourage you to take a look at the new parts. And for those of you who are not, this is a great place to learn all about GWiz. This far, the first part just talks about why GWiz, why providers um, really love what we're doing. 
First and foremost, it's convenient and economical. You can become a customer at two in the morning if you want. You can download your curriculum at two in the morning if you want. Um, you can send us an email at two in the morning, but we're probably not gonna answer you till the next day. Um, it also prepares children for school and life. And this is really important because we, do, we address 10 developmental areas in the GWIS curriculum and cover the whole child. And those are included in this user's guide, so we'll touch on that. Um, the curriculum is aligned with all state standards. I think I have two or three more to do. Um, and also it is approved. So we are approved for QRS programs in Pennsylvania, in Delaware, in North Carolina, in Minnesota, in Illinois, and Florida, and places like Ohio and Indiana. We are aligned with Step Up to Quality in Ohio and Paths to Quality in Indiana. And like I said, we are aligned with other state standards as well. It's just that other states don't necessarily have an approved curriculum list. Um, the curriculum is very easy to use and it's very hands-on and very interactive. Uh, we are not a curriculum where everything is planned out for your entire day. We look at Gee Whiz as a foundation, like when you're building a house, you have to build the foundation first. It's also super important that that foundation is strong so that it will support the house. But as you know, when you build a home, a lot of the foundation work is similar. It doesn't matter if you're building a mansion or a small ranch house, the foundation's gonna be relatively the same but the house that is built upon that is gonna be very different. And so that's where we view ourselves. We're that foundation, that strong base, that's covering all those developmental areas, then you're the person who's gonna build that house. And it's gonna look different for every child because as we know, every child is different. So when you think about gee whiz, think about it as the foundation, and then you're gonna expand upon that based on your children and their interests, their needs, where they are developmentally, and, and just kind of build up from there. Um, that said, probably the most important reason that providers love GWIS is the fact that we cover all ages from babies all the way through school age in one curriculum. So that means you don't have to buy two or three. It means you only need one. And we'll show you how we do that in the lesson plans in just a second. Here's some testimonials. And then section one talks about your role. And your role is really important. Um, I was just talking with a quality specialist in, where was that? Ohio, I think it was, about how important it is for providers to understand, like yourselves, the impact that you have on the children in your care. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. And especially because for many of those children, you have, the to have them from the time they're babies until they do go to school and beyond. Um, so your role is super important. And this section talks about the importance of questioning, asking open-ended questions to get that engagement going back and forth with children, modeling language, which just basically means talking to the children and exposing them to new words in the context of what they're doing, uh, teachable moments, and then ongoing training and self-assessment. And I'm gonna skip this section right here because it's self-explanatory. You can certainly read through it. This section on teachable moments is all about a big part of early childhood education of things that just happen um, and taking, um, capitalizing on those things when they do happen. And then ongoing professional development and training. This is super important because this is something we just started at GE Wiz. We have something called the GE Wiz cohort and the cohort hosts a training every month that is a topic related to early childhood, but then we link it back to GWIS. Wiz. So for instance, in August, we did um, exploring diversity in GWIS, Wiz. And then just last week, we did the why behind experiences and GWIS. Wiz. And we record those and post those on our website. I'll show you where they are. Um, those are, and if you're in Pennsylvania, those, uh, those the, first, the second one, the why, was the very first one we got into the PD directory. So we'll be adding future ones as well. But we really wanted to support you and give you an opportunity to learn about topics related to early childhood education where you didn't have to go somewhere. And um, you could do it at your own, pay, you know, if you can join us live, that's great. But if not, the recorded ones are there. Um, this explains how the cohort works on this page. And then this talks about how we build learning about the why behind the experiences, for instance, into our lesson plans. 
and then our different training uh, guides that we have, and we'll, we'll actually see those in a bit. Uh, this section goes into individualizing an authentic assessment. It's really important, like I just mentioned a little bit ago, when you're talking about using any curriculum, that you individualize it for each child because all children are very different. Um, even two two-year-olds can be extremely diff different. And so it's very important to do your anecdotal notes, to observe and make and reflect upon what you learn and then plan experiences accordingly. And this whole section talks about what that means. It talks about our how we view individualizing the curriculum as a five-step approach where you observe, you reflect, you plan, you do, you reflect, and then it all goes round and round and round. So this section of the user's guide talks about what each one of those steps is, all five of those. And then it goes on to talk about what an anecdotal note is, how you do anecdotal notes, what they look like, and why they're important. And in, to me, an anecdotal note is like you're a camera or a video camera where you're recording everything you see and you hear, but it's not your opinion and it's not what you think you see and hear. Um, it's kind of like in the old, old timey, uh, um, police shows where they say just the facts, ma'am, only the facts. This is kind of just the facts. Uh, and this talks about what a reflection is, which is where you put in your opinion and you use your experience about like, okay, I just observed this. What did I learn from that? How does that relate to the child's development or needs? So this section walks through all of that, and this is definitely a webinar that could be one of our cohort training webinars because it is such an important part of any curriculum. Um, so don't be surprised if we do this webinar in the future. Uh, and then here's our new component for those of you who are our current customers. <clears throat> Excuse me. We just added this in October, the first two units in October. Um, it's called our Customized Individualized Lesson Planning Sheet, and I'll show you where that is when we get into the actual curriculum, but it's a available in two formats. It's available as a Word format where you can actually type on the form and it's available as a PDF if you prefer to print it out and write on it with your own handwriting. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail about what this is right now, but like I said, we're going to get into the curriculum and I'll show you what it is and why we added it. And this talks about putting all this together, what you do with all those anecdotal notes. Here's a printable observe and reflect grid. This is something that you can print this one page out of this um, out of this guide as many times as you want to use to do your anecdotal notes and your reflections. And then in the curriculum, oh, this is a sample of what it might look filled out. In the curriculum, we also have something called an individualization web. And our individualization web is a tool for you to individualize each of our units based on the, a child's interests and or needs. So this is a blank one. Again, if you're doing your own unit, you might want to use our blank one. Um, if you're using the curriculum, this part would be filled out for you with the topics for the month and the unit name. And then here's a sample of what that might look like. And then here's a new section we just added. We get asked all the time, does GWIS have a formal assessment tool? And the short answer is no, but the longer answer is that's on purpose. When we started GWIS, we looked at the different formal assessments out there, like I mentioned earlier, um, the ounce scale, ages and stages, gold, DRDP, et cetera, et cetera. And um, we looked at all the state standards that were out there. And we decided, well, if we're covering all 10 developmental areas for all these ages, and we're doing it in a very comprehensive, intentional way, then it really shouldn't matter which assessment tool a provider chooses to use, because if we're doing that and the provider is covering all this and they're individualizing, then the children should do well regardless. And from what we've been hearing from our providers, it's working. We have um, several five star providers in Ohio. Ohio, for instance, and five stars as high as you can get in Ohio, who are using GWIS, but they've chosen to use, say, gold or ages and stages, and it's working perfectly. And we wanted you to have that choice because what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another, plus what works for one group of children might not work for another group of children. So we wanted you to have the ability to choose. So that's kind of how we work with different um, 
formal assessment tools. Now, on our website, if you need developmental checklists, you can find them under our FCC Tools tab. And those are checklists for birth to age four. They're actually developed by the CDC. They are available in English and Spanish, so they are something you could definitely share with parents. And then we go into the 10 developmental areas that GWIS curriculum addresses. Um, before I go into this section, though, I wanted to pause for just one moment and see if we have any questions about anything I've covered thus far. If you have a question, again, just type it in that little box. If your box is collapsed, then that little orange square or orange um, arrow, just click on that and it'll bring it out so you can type. Um, but as we move along, if you start, if you have a question while Beth's talking, please go ahead. Don't wait. Go ahead and type it in. We'll give you a minute just in case there are any questions. I know it's a lot to okay. take in. <laughs> so it's recorded. Um, I think that's no questions right now. But if Beth, I will interrupt you and stop you if we get some in. Okay, I'm going to go through this next section and probably talk about the research a little bit and then I will pause again. So um, this section talks about the 10 developmental areas that are part of the GWIS curriculum and each one is highlighted on its own page like this, this is language development, where on this side in the blue box, we talk about what language development is and in this side, what it looks like for different ages. You'll notice these little symbols here and these are super important. Um, for customers, you know why. <coughs> Excuse me, for non-customers, here's why. We use these symbols in our lesson plans to designate when an activity addresses this area of development. So if you see the speech bubble, which is what I call it, you'll know the activity addresses language development. So each of the areas has its own picture code, I call them. So language development is a speech bubble. And literacy knowledge, which is things like phonological awareness, um, appreciation for books, alphabet knowledge, beginning writing, concepts about print, that's the stack of books. Math knowledge is the number one in a circle. That's all the things related to, to counting and numbers and seriation and positional concepts and sorting and grouping and measurement, all the things you see here. Science knowledge is the magnifying glass. Logic and reasoning is a question mark and that's problem solving, um, using symbols to represent things like when a child picks up a block and pretends it's a cell phone, that would be logic and reasoning. Approaches to learning is a smiley face, that's the curiosity, the initiative, attention, and cooperation, working together. Social studies knowledge is the world. That's family, community, people and places, caring for the environment and history. Social and emotional development is the heart. This is where things like attachment to the caregiver, um, attachment to their peers. This would also be where self-regulation falls and character education. In the GWIS curriculum, we build character education into the lessons. So we have kindness, responsibility, respect, and honesty built in. And if you're in Florida, we know that's really important. Uh, creative arts is the paintbrush, but that's also, there's a symbol for uh, music notes if it happens to ha have music related to it, but it encompasses not just the fine arts, but also music and dramatic play and dance. And then physical development and health is the hand. That'd be your gross motor, your fine motor, um, healthy habits, safety falls under here. That would all be part of physical development and health. And then what we do in the lesson plans, and I'll show you this chart in the back of each teaching guide, is we take it a step farther. Um, we have these codes over here, which we call learning indicators. We also, on our alignment charts to state standards, use these codes. And these are the more specific skills that fall under, for instance, the area of language development. So we have four specific skills. In the back of the teaching guide, we take each activity that we do, and we have the specific learning indicator codes that that activity addresses. So if you need to show, for instance, how you're meeting specific skills in your state, that chart does it for you. 
there are two pages because we go through each of the 10 areas here. And you can see those picture codes are right there too. And this explains what I just explained to you. And we're going to look at the lesson plans and get into more detail about how we do that in the curriculum. The next section is about our philosophy research and more. Um, again, this has been recently updated and expanded. The philosophers upon which we base are Jean Piaget, Vygotsky, Erickson, and Slomansky. And this just a base, is a very brief overview of who they are and what their philosophies are. And then the research base, what we did is we now have broken it apart by area. So we have, like, for instance, family child care, including provider relationships and interactions. All the research listed here ties in with that heading. Then we have all the research related to learning during daily routines, language-rich environments. And again, because we want to stay on top of things, we are constantly reviewing research related to early childhood education and specifically research related to family child care because that's what's really important to us. So this section will probably continue to grow. Um, it's grown quite a bit <laughs> in just the past couple of weeks. Um, and then we talk about developmentally appropriate practice, what that is, why it's important, and what it looks like um, so that you know. And then this is our brand new section. So before I go any further, are there any questions related to the 10 areas of development, the learning indicators, the philosophy and or research upon which this curriculum is based that I can answer before I share this new section with everyone? Okay, give you just a minute to type it in. And Beth, you did mention about the state standards, the alignment charts on our homepage. Yeah, and I will show everybody where okay. those are. Okay, and also Head Start's there also. Yes. Okay, no questions yet, but if okay. you have any, um, type them in. Thanks. Uh, absolutely. All right, so this is a new section that we added about meeting the needs of all children with GWIS. Um, we know that children come to you from varying backgrounds. They have different family makeups, different cultural backgrounds, different languages they may speak. And so this whole section is designed to help you learn more about the importance of, say, cultural responsiveness or linguistic responsiveness, um, and also working with children with disabilities. Now, we cannot possibly cover every disability in this teaching or in this training manual. Um, otherwise, it would be so long that it would be crazy. But we have a very, we have two very helpful links in here. Let, let's say you want to learn more about children with autism, for instance, that will help you out. Um, this section talks about what cultural responsiveness is and how you can make sure that what you're doing in your program is, is responsive to the different cultures of the families you serve. Like I said earlier, we did a webinar called Exploring Diversity. This webinar lives in our video gallery. It also lives on our um, channel on YouTube. And it's a great video or, uh, webinar to help you learn about diversity. Then the next step is to gather information about your families. And this is the perfect thing to do when you're enrolling. Um, I'm going to show you on the next pages, we have some tools to help you do exactly that. But it's really important to know about the families that you have in your program so that you can make sure that your program is reflective of their culture, for instance. And then this talks about how you can incorporate it into the GWIS curriculum and it gives you some ideas on how to get started with that. Um, I at this could be a whole webinar right here on cultural responsiveness, but I don't want to take all the time on that because we have a lot to cover. So I'm just going to go through here, but I encourage you to come back and read these sections. And especially if you are, in fact, uh, a current customer and this is all new because we just added it, definitely come back and look at this. Um, examples of questions to ask families when you enroll to help you learn about their culture and their family. These are just some suggestions. There are way more that we're sure you'll think of. And then this is a tool that you can use to help that communication back and forth between home. We have something built into the curriculum called our All About My Week report that you fill out and it goes home on Friday to let parents and families know kind of about the week and where what their children spend a lot of time doing, what they're learning to do, et cetera. But this is the opposite. This you would send home on Friday 
and have parents bring in on Monday, or you could actually have them fill it out on Monday at drop-off if they're not too rushed to let you know kind of how the weekend went, because we all know Mondays can be kind of crazy, but if you have a heads up as to how the weekend went, then that would be very helpful. So this one is the English version that you can print out and use, and here's the Spanish version. It's just a way for you to get some insight into how that weekend went. And it also helps to build that back and forth communication with the families. Then this section talks about linguistic responsiveness. We know that in today's world, there are children and families that speak many different languages. Um, and so these are some tips on how you can reflect those different languages in your program. Gives you again some tricks on how to do that. And also, what do you do if you don't speak that language? My number one tip would be to make Google Translate your friend because Google Translate is awesome. You can type things in and not only will it type it in the other language, but it will also say it out loud if you press this little symbol. Um, I love Google Translate. And here are some more ways that you can help because dual language learners are not just speaking their home language, but they're also learning English at the same time. So they're actually learning two languages, especially if they're young children. You think about a two-year-old who's from an English-speaking family learning to speak English, but then you think of a two-year-old that's from a Spanish-speaking family or um, another language, and then they're also learning how to speak English at the same time. So they're called dual language learning because they're actually learning two languages at one time. And these are some tips on how to work with children who are in that process. Then this is the section on disabilities, suspected delays in GW and, and, and GWIS. So we have some disability fact sheets on our website. There's the link to that. It's under the FCC tool tab. But this Parent Center Hub has some excellent resource information about all kinds of disabilities. Um, so that's why that link is there. This talks about adult-child interactions when working with children with disabilities child-to-child -child interactions, because those are also super important. Inclusion is very, very important when working with children with disabilities. Examining your environment, you know, how can you adjust your environment to, to help a child that might have a disability? And then finally, curriculum adaptations. The section talks about G, the GWIS curriculum and gives you some ideas on how you can adjust what we're giving you to work with children that have disabilities. And then we get into the section on implementing the curriculum. Um, I'm going to stop right now and see if there are any questions um, about the new section that we just added. And then what we're going to do is actually leave this training manual instead of looking at implementing the curriculum and actually go into the curriculum so I can show you the actual components. But I, before I leave the user's guide, I want to make sure there aren't any questions about anything I've covered thus far. Lots of new information, even for the, um, even if for people that have been using us for a couple of years, there's a lot of new things. Okay, the, um, doesn't appear to be any typing. I really can't see when you're typing until it gets posted. So. <laughs> so, All right, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit my back button and I'm going to close this one. And there is another new guide called Parent Involvement family engagement and gee whiz, if we have time, I want to come back and look at that one. Um, and then we have the learning environment in gee whiz. This is to help you prepare for if you're going to be evaluated via class or FICRs. This is going to help you in that area. But what I really want to do right now is because I do know we have quite a few people who are not customers, is I want to sign in and show you um, how you access the curriculum. So first and foremost, if you're not a customer, the easiest way to become a customer, and it's super quick, is to scroll down on our homepage past this and just choose the one you want. You can choose to be monthly, quarterly, or yearly. That's totally up to you. Um, and we also do have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not happy, we will certainly refund your money. But you would subscribe and then you enter your credit card information. You'd be charged monthly if you charge month, if you choose monthly, quarterly if you charge if you choose excuse me, quarterly, and yearly if you charge if you decide to go yearly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in. And those are recurring charges. So if you sign up monthly, it'll be the same day the next month. 
but you can cancel at any time. But just understand once you sign up, they are recurring until you cancel. Your screen would look a little different here because you'd have all your information. I'm I'm set up as a trainer, so I don't have obviously billing, but your information would be right here if you were. And now this tab that was not there before, GWE customers has appeared. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under this month's units. Um, we actually currently have four units available because we're in what we call our crossover time. Um, because we have a lot of the, those of you who are not currently ordering, I'll let you know how this works. So on the 20th of the month, so for instance, on September the 20th, right, um, we posted the October units. The September units were posted actually on August the 20th. And so right now we're in what we call our crossover time. So our, our September units are still up for just a little bit longer. Around the fifth of the month, give or take, those will come off of our website and they will no longer be available. And you may say, well, why is that? I wanna go back and get them. Well, the reason is if we, since 2012, had kept all of the units that we've ever done on our website, first of all, it would be crashed and nobody would be able to get to anything. These files are very large and have a lot of graphics. So what you need to do when you become a GWIS customer is as soon as the units are posted on the 20th, we do put it on our calendar and we have a planning calendar that's available to GW customers under this tab, I believe, um, is to make sure that you go in there and you download and save all the files. That way you will never be as caught in a situation where you're like, oh no, it's you know August the 1st and I forgot to download the June files. I wanna go back and get them and then they're not there. So make sure to just make a note to yourself on your calendar, on your smartphone, which is what I do now anymore because I'm getting older and can't remember anything. I use my reminders all the time is to download and save all the files. So right now we have our October units, which are a community is, a kaleidoscope of colors, and then our September units, which like I said, are gonna be up for just a short while longer, um, My Home, Your Home, and Dancing to the Beat, okay? So these September units will only be available for a few more days, and then they're gonna disappear. So if you're not a customer, it's actually a super, super good time to become one because you, right now, for a few more days, will have access to the September units as well as the October ones. And unlike other curriculums out there. This is not dated. You could do my home, your home, any time of the year. Same thing with dancing to the beat. We don't date it. There's not holidays and seasons written to it. That's a separate piece that we provide under a separate tab. I'll show you where. Um, so you needn't worry that these would be useless to you because truly that would not be the case. And in fact, I'm actually going to go into the my home, your home unit um, and show you around. So I'm going to look at the English because I don't speak Spanish, but if you need Spanish files, you would go there. Our family letters, digital family notes, all about my week reports are available in Spanish. And then if the make it sheets have any um, words on them, then they're available in Spanish as well. So what you would do is you would come in here for the my home, your home unit. And I'm just going to scroll down briefly. You'll see all these buttons. OK, so each one of those is a file of materials related to this unit, my home, your home. I'm gonna start by going into the teaching guide. Teaching guides range from like 30 to 33 pages to probably no more than 38. It just depends on what I put in the back. Some of them tend to be a little longer than others. Um, these again are PDF files, so if I hover up here, I can see where I can print them if I so choose, and I definitely am gonna download. And when you download this, the easiest way to do it is if you use folders, which is kind of what I do, I would start a folder called My Home, Your Home, and I would just put all these files under that folder. So then if I wanted to go back and do that unit, I would know where everything was. But you can do it however you would like. I would also encourage you to back it up to either a flash drive, to a, an external hard drive. Um, I use Google, I have a Gmail account, and they have a free Google Drive, which is like the cloud, so I save things out there that way. If, God forbid something happened to my computer, I'd have my files. But whatever you want, just so you have something to back it up. 
So each unit starts with an introduction about the unit, what we're going to talk about, there's a table of contents, and then we give you this helpful little chart so you can remember what all those program symbols mean, all those 10 developmental areas. And then we also have a symbol for activities that are gross motor, out, activities that can be done or should be done outside, and then this is our character education. So for those of you, for instance, in Florida, where you have to show how you're doing character education, just look for this symbol and you will know. Then we have our two-week planning grid, which is an overview of the whole unit. You'll notice again, no date, just 10 days. Um, some of these may take you longer than 10 days because you might want to do things more than one time or, move, or stretch things out. And again, remember, we're the foundation. You're going to build the house. So this is not an end all. We're going to get you started and then you're going to add to this. And then our school age experiences. So in the lesson plans, we start with our unit name, what the focus is, and then this is a cumulative list of all the areas of development that you would address if you did all the experiences that are planned for this day. So everything that we have planned, if you did it all, you'd address all these areas of development. We have this box over here, which is ways that you can model language. These are vocabulary that we're not going to print on an index card, but instead we want you to include in conversations with children. And then these are other ways you can continue to model language throughout the day. We have a health and safety tip every day. We have a teaching tip every day and a transition idea. This is a way for you to move the children physically and mentally from one activity to the other during the course of the day that's related to things we'll be talking about. Um, remember those symbols? This one addresses character education. It's also going to get the children moving. And during this activity, you would cover language, social and emotional, science, literacy, social studies, and approaches to learning. It's a very simplistic format. Bullets, first bullet is always the why behind it. It's why you're doing this experience. And um, the last webinar we did was all about the why behind the experiences. So if you're curious as to what all that was about, you might want to watch that webinar. Um, sometimes we have an extension. We build extensions in where we think they're um, appropriate. And it's just another way for you to to kind of expand the experience. In this case, it's a link to a video on YouTube from Sesame Street about brothers and sisters. We use technology in a meaningful way in GWIS. It is not willy-nilly. It is planned and it's there's a there's a reason behind it. So for instance, let's uh, part of this unit is actually talking about homes and different kinds of homes around the world. Well, obviously we are not going to get in an airplane and fly to Africa or to China to look at different kinds of homes, but the wonder of the internet is is that there are great resources out there that you can use to expose children to homes in Africa, homes in China, or homes in Australia. Um, and so we will build that type of information into the curriculum to save you time so that you don't have to go digging around for all of those resources. Then after that, there are two small group experiences, which are for your toddlers through your um, advanced preschoolers. And again, they have the cumulative list. Anything in red just means you might want a little bit of extra time to gather. We do do a materials list that has all this information on it as well. And you'll notice that some of the activities will have levels. All right, so we've adapted them from different developmental levels. Now, when I say toddler is two, think about your children and think about their developmental level, not their chronological age. And so what I encourage you to do is read all these options. Think about every child in your group and say, oh, well, I think that uh, Miranda could do it this way, but Jose would probably have more fun doing it this way, and I could totally see um, Rebecca doing it this way. You know your children best. These are just ideas, and you might even think of some more, but the, the key is there to think about developmentally where they are because they're not all going to approach it the same way. And then in purple, we have an experience for babies. These are designed for your infants to be done one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you may find that your other children want to join in as well, and that's just fine. But we wanted to give you some things to do with infants that are just for infants. So each day, you're going to see you have a similar setup where you have on the first page of the day all the things we talked about up here, plus you're exploring together. And then when you move into the second part of the day, you have your small group experiences, and then you also have your infant experience. And so the lesson plans go on like this for 10 days. So if you just 
bear with me one second because I want to show you where the school age experiences are. I have to scroll because I can't grab a hold of my uh, cursor on the side till it gets beyond my go to webinar bar. <laughs> All right, there it is. All right, so I'm going to grab a hold of this if it'll let me. Come on. And I want to show you where the school is. So there's 10 days like this. And then we get to the school age experiences. When we started GWiz, we asked, do you want school age activities? And everybody said overwhelmingly, please give me some. So these are experiences for those children that come after school. Um, and they are designed to just be tied in with the unit, but take things a step further and deeper. And so you'll find that uh, they all have an extend for another day because these are activities that might need to be done for more than one day or might want to, you might want to repeat. And there are six of these. So the next three pages have six experiences for your school age children. Does that mean that if you have some advanced preschoolers, they might not enjoy doing this? Absolutely not. Um, but it just means these are designed for your more advanced uh, or for your children that are in school and come to you after school. The first unit of every month has a story prop. For this one, it was called Where in the House Riddle Book. So it tells you how to put this together. It might be, they might be flannel board pieces. They could be props where you cut them out and you tape them onto blocks or boxes stuffed with newspaper. Um, it just varies <clears throat> depending on the unit. And then this one did not have the story in the guide, but if it was a story where you had, say, flannel board pieces, the text for the story would be here as well. Then we have our make it sheets. Our make it sheets are totally optional. They are not something that is required. They are something that are optional and you can choose to use if you want, but you do not have to. Um, a lot of open-ended, this is a lottery game, a lotto game. This is one where they're gonna dictate, they're gonna write their name or you're gonna write their name and then they're gonna draw pictures. Um, sometimes we'll do patterning strips and cards. It just varies. These are experiences for your children who are getting ready to go to kindergarten. You might want to even use some of these with your school aged children or your more advanced preschoolers. And then here's that chart. Remember I said when we looked at the learning indicators that there's a chart? Okay, here's that chart. So if you need to show what specific skills each activity is addressing, this is where you do that. So for instance, let's say we did Fantastic Families. These are the specific skills you will have addressed. Um, let's say you do kitchen tool art. These are the skills you're going to address. So all 10 days and all the experiences are here and then your school age ones um, are right here. They just didn't fit on that page. We do provide a book list with each unit so you can go to the library or gather your own books related to the unit. Songs, poems, rhymes are always in the back because most of the time there's just not enough room. Um, sometimes we also put what I call goodies in the back. In this unit, they, they are these um, different people that you're going to tape to blocks because we're going to use them to make families of different kinds. Um, so there's lots of things that go in the back depending on the unit. So that's the teaching guide. Um, I was right here, hit the download button, okay? The story props for this one are that book that I just showed you. So to download those, the Where in the House Riddle book, you would simply go here. And this is the one component that you absolutely will need to print because it is obviously story props. So you would print it here. And you can, of course, save it as well. We encourage you to do that. The materials list is all the materials in the teaching guide on in one document and in red that just means you need a little bit of extra time to put it together or to gather it or you might need to cut something out put something together we try to keep it at a minimum and we try to use things that you should have around your house okay and this one actually has these bright yellow boxes to give you heads up on anything you might need families to send in like a family photo or you might need some extent information about their extended families um, things that you want to start collecting bath poofs I know I have a whole cupboard of those because I seem to collect them. Um, providers review is a sheet that you can use to review how you think the unit went at the end. So this would be the three most experienced that they liked the most and if you did it again how you would change it up. Add and enhance is a newer component that we created to help you add to each of the different areas materials that enhance the unit. Um, this is really important when it comes time for things like class and Fickers because it has to do with the learning environment. So there are actually six different areas and things that you could, if you so chose, 
to want to add. This is optional materials that you can add if you want to. Here's the individualization web that I mentioned that's customized to the unit. And again, with any of these per child components like that, you can print up to 12 copies. That's part of your subscription. So you do not need to have like one, one subscription for each child. When you purchase GWIZ, you can, cop, you can print 12 copies of anything that's for the children. This is a new book, uh, booklet called Letters and Literacy. And the goal behind this is to work with children who are developmentally ready to start talking about letters and letter sounds. Um, some children are and some children are not and you know them best. But this is a way for you to take what we've given you in the teaching guide. So for instance, families are different on page five and integrate the letter F. Okay, so there's two pages of experiences to help you do that in this guide, and there's one of these for each of the units. Here's the All About My Week report, again, available in English and Spanish. This is the one that you would send home on Friday. I also encourage you to make a copy of this once you've filled it out to put in the child's portfolio or their file. It's kind of a running record of, you know, where their interests were, what they were getting good at. It's kind of nice to be able to go back and look at that um, later on. The family letter, which is also available in English and Spanish, gives them an overview of the unit, the topics, and then simple things they can do during bath time, meal time, bedtime, and when riding in the car. And then there's usually either a song or a rhyme that they can do at home as well. And the digital family notes are Think of them as a photo that you take on your iPhone or your smartphone. It's actually a picture file. So you can technically save these to not just your computer, but you could save them to your phone and text them to parents or caregivers. They're very simple things that they can do at home to reinforce the unit. There's two of those. And then um, that would be all the files for this unit of my home, your home. Um, before I go, I want to go into the October unit because I need to show you the new component, especially for those of you who are customers. Does anybody have any questions about the teaching guide, the lesson plans, or any of the components that come with each unit of GWIZ? There is a page on our homepage that goes through the components because Beth is actually where our customers download the files, but um, there is a page under our products that goes through all the components. And we have a video too. I'll show you where that is when I get done in here. Okay. Um, and no questions. I think everybody's tired tonight. I know I'm tired uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm going to back out of here because I was in the first unit for September and I want to scroll back up here again to pick a, um, pick one of these units for October because I, we just added this new um, customized individualized form and I want to show everybody what that looks like. So as you scroll down here, you're going to see two versions. One is a PDF file and one is a Word file. The Word document means that you can actually type on the document. You would have to save it. Um, you know, on your computer, rename it, whatever you want to do. And then that way you can take, you can actually type in the, in the file and save it so you don't have to handwrite. But I'm going to go into this one just because otherwise it'll open Word on my computer and who knows what might happen then. <laughs> so this is the PDF. If I wanted to print it out, I could print it out and write. But you put the child's name, well, first of all, you put the dates you teach the unit here, your name there, and then the children's names go across here. And then on this side, you have all for day one, all the experiences, plus you can write your own experiences down here. This box would be used to detail, for instance, okay, I'm gonna, I don't really need to do anything for the exploring together, but for, let's say, um, Clarice, uh, when we do creating with colors, I'm going to need to do this. She needs it to be individualized or customized in this way. So this tool is designed to help you really note and denote how you're individualizing what we've given you to meet the needs of the children in your group in one place. So it's, um, there's, I think, two days on each one. So it's um, five pages plus, I, I, think yeah it's five pages but again you can choose to use the word one so you could just actually type in the box 
and I hope I've locked the cells so they don't mess up your grids and carry over to the other, <laughs> other page. Um, so that's a new component we just added. That again, that's the beauty of GWiz. We can do that. You know, we just chose to do that. Um, I do want to point out in the second unit of each month, instead of a story, there's a teaching tool which is like a manipulative, it might be pattern cards and strips, it could be a lotto game, a lot of different things. And also a puppet, there's a puppet that goes with the second one. Now that's not a puppet that's put together, it's a printable puppet that you might use and put on a paper bag, you might put it on a paper towel roll, you might put it on your hand, um, different kinds of puppets. Okay, so again, as Sherry said, right now I am actually under the GWE tab, because as you see, it says sign out, I'm signed in as a customer. If you're not a customer, you would not be able to see this button, say sign out, it would say sign in, and this tab would not be there. Um, but all the rest of it would be. So I'm gonna go home, because I do need to show you where um, someone I know wanna know where the alignment charts are. So if you scroll down on our homepage, there's a US map, and here you would just click, um, Head Start standards are here, the alignment to the Head Start Early Learning Outcomes Framework, um, and then whatever your state is, you would just click and you could see the alignment chart to your state, okay? Um, I am going to scroll back up, and I wanted to show you under the Our Products tab, here's our yearly outline. We have a digital can, uh, catalog. We also have the monthly unit component Sherry was talking about, which is all the different components that are included in the curriculum. And there's a video um, about that as well. If you scroll down here again to watch videos to learn more, There are three very short videos right here about how we address all ages, the components for this current year. Now the new individualization customization is not in there because we literally added that last week um, and how we can help save you some money. And we're gonna be adding to this. So we're gonna have videos like how do you log in? Um, how do you save the materials? This is a new thing that we are doing um, to help make things easier for you. Under the FCC Tools tab is where you would find all the things like our holiday and seasonal, the developmental checklist, the disabilities fact sheets. Everything under here on the FCC Tools is open to everybody. You don't have to be a customer. And then under support, we have our webinar training videos. This is where when I showed you the diversity one, and the why behind experiences. If you wanted to watch that, you would click here. Here is the PDF handout for that PowerPoint presentation, as well as the post assessment if you wanted a certificate of attendance. And if you scroll down some more, you'll find the diversity one, okay? Speaking of post assessments while we're here, because I know we're running out of time, here's tonight's. Um, so I went under, again, support, and then I went under webinar training videos. And here's where you will click. It's not live yet, so don't click it yet or it won't work. I have to make it be live after we're done. I'll turn it on. Um, if you would like to get a certificate of attendance for this webinar, this is where you will go. So again, under support and then under webinar training videos and just scroll down and click the purple button for post assessment for the overview. Um, that said, I am gonna stop talking because part of this uh, webinar, we wanted to be Q&A about any questions that you have related to GWiz, to family childcare, that you think maybe we could answer. And so with the last few minutes that we have, I would like to open it up to see if there's any questions that anyone has related to either the curriculum, family childcare, anything that we can answer for you at this time. And then, and maybe if we don't know the answer, throw it out there to everyone else on this uh, webinar, see if they might be able to answer as well. If you can't, if maybe when we end the webinar, you may think of something that maybe you need an answer to, send us an email under the support tab that's contact us and you can type in your question there and we can get back with you. Also, I wanted to point out that there is an FAQ, frequently asked questions under that same support tab um, that has so much information. Most of the time, 
those questions are covered in that FAQ section. Um, it's a little slider bar and you can see, you can see all the questions we've kind of anticipated or had in the past. But we don't have any questions and we're narrowing in on 8.30. So um, again, oh, and Beth, you've got some things to share about the um, discount yes. code. Yes, and I know we have some people on here who are not customers. If you decide to subscribe, there's a very helpful doc document under um, the support tab right here called how to access the GWIS curriculum. It literally walks you through with screenshots exactly what I just did a few minutes ago when I logged in and went to the curriculum. So if you're thinking about subscribing, this is a great document to get you started. And again, it's under support. Pretty much anything you need, if you have a question, check support first, because more than likely you might find what you're looking for there. Um, with that said, I'm going to go back home again. And yes, so um, for those of you speaking of not being customers, we do have a discount code available that we're offering tonight um, for new customers. This would be if you're new or you're not active right now and you're coming back. Um, the code is, and I'll give everybody a chance to get a pencil. Um, and Sherry, maybe you want to type it into the box there yeah. and so everybody can see it. It is web. W as in water, E as in elephant, B as in boy, 2019. And Sherry's going to type that in the box so you can write it down. But if you use that code when you place your first order, and there's a there's a there's a place on the form on the order form to put that in, it will give you ten dollars off your first month, monthly, quarterly, or yearly payment. So let's say you choose monthly, then your first monthly payment's only eight ninety five, and then the second month it'll go back it'll go to the regular price of $18.95. But like Sherry said, you can cancel at any time. You're totally in control of your subscription. This is not where you have to sign up for nine months, 12 months, three months. Um, and again, it's not a per child thing. You can print up to 12 copies of anything. Now, if you're a center, you would need to have um, one subscription for each of your teachers. Uh, we're not designed for centers. We're designed for family child care, but we do know we have a few that use us. So um, anyway, it's web 2019. And that will save you $10 on your first monthly, quarterly, or yearly um, payment, which is quite a good deal because the first month is only $8.95. That's like, for me, um, maybe a trip to Starbucks, but not certainly two. <laughs> um, there is a question, is the webinar approved? You can receive a certificate of attendance if you complete the post-assessment, which you can show for your uh, quality coach um, person that comes in, but it's not, webinars are not approved for, um, I guess, CEUs. Yeah, not CEUs. Now, if you're in Pennsylvania, the not this one, um, because they will not approve like training on a specific curriculum. But if you're in Pennsylvania, the diversity one, and, or not the diversity one, the why behind experience one is in the PD registry. But we have not gotten the recorded version of that in there yet. So hold off if you're in Pennsylvania till we can get, because I hope to get the diversity one in there and the why behind experiences one. And then of course, all of our future ones that we're going to be doing in there. Um, but like Sherry said, if you're in any other state, if you do the post-assessment, then we at least have a record that you attended, that you did the post-assessment, so we feel comfortable offering you the certificate of attendance that says, yep, you did this, um, So, and then you have that to share with your quality specialist. And again, to get to that assessment before we leave, because I know that's where everybody's going to, going to, want, going to want to go next, um, it's going to be under the webinar training videos. Um, I do think there's one question in there related to parent involvement that I didn't cover because we're running close on time, but I want to show you where that is. Um, under the training guides, this is our new parent involvement family engagement booklet. And I just want to show you what this is and where it is because I think there might be a question on there. Um, this talks about why it's important for you to recognize that a child's first teacher is his or her parent. I uh, know sometimes that can be really challenging depending on the parent, but it is true. They know their child better than anyone. Um, and so this talks about how it's really important to build that relationship so you're a team. 
you know, we're, we're all on the same page because in the end, it's the child that we want to benefit. So being on the same team is super important. And we know that sometimes that can be challenging. It also talks about parent involvement and the difference between parent involvement and family engagement. Um, Parent involvement is simply having them involved, which is why we provide things like our family letters and our digital family notes. And engagement is more when they're actually a part of the planning process. So this booklet is super um, important and, and really helpful with those two aspects of involving and engaging families and parents. Um, we have this new printable just a note so you can print this out if you need things from home in Spanish and in English and then this again talks about uh, family engagement what it is why it's so important and there's actually a goal setting sheet so you can sit down at a parent conference and set goals with that parent about what they hope for their child and how they're going to take steps to achieve the goal at home and you can take steps in your program. So um, I just wanted to, I know we're running out of time, but I really needed to touch on that because that is a whole new, again, for actual, I mean, for those of you who are customers, a brand new component. It's found under the support tab under training guides. And now I'm going to show you once again where that assessment link is under webinar training videos scroll down and there's the link to the post assessment okay so if you just give me literally maybe two to three minutes i have to go out there log in and make this active so it will accept responses and then you can complete that and then just allow seven to ten days for us to get your certificate to you it'll be emailed to you um it's not going to come in the mail or anything but just give us some time to get it done because uh, we have to do everybody's individually there is one more question where they just want to see again how to save the curriculum on your computer. If you're on a PC, you can show that, Beth. The, um, yes. Okay, so if you go, I'm going to go, I have to go into one. Hold on one second, let me get back in here. All right, so I'm just going to pull up. I won't even pull up the teacher's guide because it's so big. I will just pull up the story props. So on mine, I have this icon for printing. This is my save download button. So if I click this right now, then I could click it and it would say save the file and I could tell it where I want it to save it. Do I want it to save it to my general like big drive, which in most PCs is C, or do I want to create a folder like, and, and that's what I would encourage you to do, to create a folder and name it. So I think one of our short videos we're going to do, the posts on that one site will be just like, how do I download and save these? Now, the problem with that is everybody's computer set up a little differently. This toolbar might pop up down here for you, or if you're on a Mac, it could be somewhere different. So that's what makes it a little tricky is everybody's computer is a little bit different. On the Mac, if you open up the file, or op yeah, open up the file up at the top, you'll have File Edit View, and you just click on File and Save As. I would encourage you to create a folder and put those um, put those files under a folder. My husband is the worst for putting it on desktop, and then he can't ever find anything. So, <laughs> but if you set up the folders according to the title of the unit, and then just plop each um, file in there as you download it and save it in that file. Um, it's just a great way to do it, and then you can find it later. Exactly. But it's pretty simple. However you download files, um, that's the way you go in and save it. Um, and please, please take the time to do that at the beginning of the month. Any other questions? Um, I think she got that answered. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. If you have any other questions after the um, webinar is over, please send them under customer service. And then also that page where Beth showed you under the uh, support tab will be the recording. Once we get it recorded and uploaded um, in a format that can we can take it on our site, then it'll be there. Probably won't be until tomorrow, but Beth will at least have the link for the post assessment, you can go ahead and do that. But the uh, if you need a review of the recording, that's probably not going to be available until tomorrow. Um, but we appreciate everyone coming. 
and taking the time and again um, share any thoughts that you have with us concerning the webinar things that you might want to see in the future um, and again with that said we're just going to tell you good night Beth? yep good night everybody if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us anytime and don't forget to write down if you haven't written it down already the discount code um, because if you want to become a customer it's a great way to save ten dollars perfect All thanks right. everyone night, night.